Hey guys, this is Hero. And today I'm going to be focusing on how to understand the deeper meaning of all transits, okay? So what do I mean by this? Well, as we know, planets besides the moon, they don't really transit a sign too often, okay? For example, the sun transits from sign to sign uh, about once a month. Uh, Mercury and Venus, they kind of vary, but it, it stays along with the sun uh, about at that once a month rate, sometimes a little bit faster. And all the other planets move transit signs even slower than that, right? But however, the energies are always constantly changing, okay? Regardless, like for example, the, the sun, when it transits, um, like let's just say into a sign, those whole 30 days are not going to be all the same for the sun, even if you're just isolating just the sun aspect itself, it's not going to be the same the whole 30 days. And it has not, and it has, and it's not because of the fact that, um, uh, it's, it's not because of the fact of any other planets transits also. It's because of the fact that in the divisional charts, the planets are moving a lot faster. So if you're able to be aware of them, you'll have a lot better success at, you know, when you look at transits, seeing, okay, exactly how the energies are constantly shifting, okay? Because the Lugna chart, the D1 chart, it only shows the most superficial aspect of everything, okay? The Lugna chart, the D1, it's literally on the surface. It's literally the physical placement of the planet itself, okay? So it's just showing what's happening at the physical, okay? In general, the D1 chart shows what's happening and the D and the divisional charts show kind of the isolated results in certain areas of your life, okay? But... The D9 chart in specific, you obviously, if you're, when it comes to any transit, if you're looking at a very specific area of your life, yeah, you could look at that divisional chart as well, right? For example, if you want to know something about career or prestige or something like that, you'd obviously look at the D10. If you're looking at like childbirth or, you know, your, your you know, that closer intimate um, relation with your spouse, you might want to look at the D7. Uh, but one chart, obviously, as you guys know, the Navamsha chart, the D9, it can be used for anything. It can be used for career. It can be used for your relationship with your spouse. It, it just is used in general. Why? Because the D9 chart is the Lugna chart broken up into nine parts. Okay, so it's each sign broken up into nine parts. Now, why is this important? Well, as you guys know, there's signs and there's nakshatras in the whole zodiac belt. Okay, there's 27 nakshatras and there's... 12 signs. Now, these 27 nakshatras um, are composed into four paddhas each, okay? So if you multiply 27 times four, that's 108 paddhas in the whole zodiac belt. And those 108, if you do the math, there's 12 signs and 108 paddhas. So that means there's exactly nine paddhas per sign, okay? So the nakshatra and pada system, it's kind of separate from the sign system, but they both work kind of in parallel, okay? Now, like I said, there's about nine padas per sign. So what that means is that the D9 chart beautifully kind of shows the relationship between the sign, the sign and the nakshatra pada that a planet is in in the Lugna chart, okay? So for example, based off of this sign, and it's in this Padda, it's gonna be in this sign in the um, in the Navamsha chart, okay? So it's basically, the Navamsha chart is basically showing that planet's progression from Padda to Padda in the D1 chart, okay? So if you're looking at any transit in general, it's important to analyze the D9 chart as well, okay? Because that's going to show you like on a deeper level. Nakshatras in general go a little bit deeper than the signs, okay? And Navamsha is looking at even the Pada level of the of the Nakshatras, okay? So in Navamsha, each time a planet moves from one sign to the next in the Navamsha chart, it sh it's basically breaking down how that planet is behaving from a different Pada to a different Pada, okay? Now, it's important to look at both. You can't just look at the D1. I mean, you can't just look at the D9 chart transits, obviously. You can, but it's important to look at the D1 chart and the D9 when it comes to transits and kind of looks at the whole story, okay? And then also, 
if you have a more isolated, specific kind of thing you want to look at in your life, look at that other divisional chart as well, okay? But for most transits in general, if you're just kind of trying to sense the general energies of things, um, look at the D1 chart, but also look at the D9, okay? As your intuition and experience grows, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. When a planet, even though it doesn't move in the Lugan chart, when it moves in that D9 chart, you'll notice that at a deeper level, there's a shift, okay? Because as you kind of go down the divisional charts, you're generally getting more away from the surface level of things and you're getting more and more closer to the soul level of things, right? I would actually encourage you if you get that, if your intuition and your experience grows that much and this kind of starts, starts clicking in you, look at Saturn and Jupiter's transits in the D60 chart as well, okay? The D60 chart, is basically the lowest level uh, divisional chart. And it's showing like the true, true, true kind of soul colors, if you want to say, of that of that planet, okay? I'll make a separate video on the, on the D60 chart itself, just in general. But when it, when it comes to general transits, um, you don't, obviously the D1 chart you want to look at, and I just said the D9 chart is also fine because the planets don't change, except for the moon. Most of them take at least about a few days on average to change. But in the D60 chart, uh, they most of the planets besides Rahu Ketu, Jupiter, and Saturn change signs um, within about a day or two on average. Okay, so the D60 chart, and most of them actually like the sun, it changes signs every half a day in the D60 chart. Okay, but Rahu Ketu, Jupiter, and Saturn are kind of quote unquote, at a spiritual level, the more powerful planets, okay? So the D60 chart, they change, I think, every, between half a week and a week, besides Saturn. Saturn takes a little bit longer than a week, on average, okay, to change signs in the D60 chart. So after you kind of look at, okay, the D1 chart, look at the, um, the D9 chart as well and see, okay, just because, you know, Sun, for example, stayed in Taurus, but in the Navamsha chart, you know, it went from it went from Pisces to Aries. So how did the Sun's behavior kind of change at a deeper level? On the surface, it was doing X, Y, and Z, but at a deeper level, the Navamsha chart is showing this, and I'm kind of sensing that it's doing this as well, okay? This, like I said, kind of comes with intuition and experience on how to analyze them, but I'm just kind of get, letting you guys know. Look at the Navamsha chart transits and after you kind of get your foot on how to interpret the Navamsha transits look at the d60 transits for those slower moving planets because those slower moving planets in general have much more of a spiritual kind of um significance to them and you'll be able to take your transits to like a whole new level because those planets also in the Navamsha chart they don't move that fast okay like for example saturn i think it doesn't move uh, it only moves in the Navamsha like uh, once every few months and Jupiter is like it doesn't even move once uh it, it takes longer than a month to move in the Navamsha too okay but in the d60 chart Jupiter will change signs usually less than once a week okay so as you gain experience and analyzing transits in the d9 chart kind of take a look at the d60 chart and, and look at that and and this will greatly help you kind of get your intuition and your experience level up when it comes to this, because you'll sense, you'll see these things, you'll sense it, you'll kind of gain that, you'll kind of gain that, that, um, that knowledge, that, that deeper foundation of knowledge. And then that way, when you look at your own chart, you look at other people's charts, when you see certain placements in these, um, especially in these charts as well, because you have so much experience analyzing transits, when you look at these, um, these, uh, these placements in these divisional charts, you'll, it, it, the planets and the signs will just start speaking to you. Okay. And like I said, astrology, it's a spiritual science, okay? So it takes a very, it takes more, I know these days it's all about, you know, um, you know, predictive astrology and all this, but that is more at a superficial material level, deep down at a spiritual level. The more we connect with ourselves and the more we connect with the intuition inside us, the higher consciousness, the more astrology placements, they'll just kind of start coming to you, okay? When you see certain placements and cer in certain combinations of certain things and certain charts, um, like certain divisional charts, uh, you know, kind of how different things all relate and compare to each other, uh, you know, the brain won't be able to comprehend it that much, but that in that at a soul level, that higher consciousness will be able to process everything, okay? And the more you connect with that, the more you can understand that 
higher wisdom, okay? So I hope this made sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Just to recap, the D1 is kind of showing what's happening at a surface level. The D9, it's kind of show, it's kind of combining the transits of the charts of, of the. It's kind of com combining the transit of a planet through the signs with the deeper level of the planet through different nakshatra padas, and it's showing that in the D9. Okay, so as it goes through from pada to pada, it's showing okay. This is the change that's occurring for that planet at like a deeper, more subconscious level. Okay, you have to look at the planet not as a thing, but as like a, as an energetic entity in itself. Okay, and once you master those, the D60 chart is obviously you know the ground foundation of you know the soul of that planet. Okay, um, and like I said, that chart it might be a little bit too much to look at the transit for all those planets as you know Sun, for example, moves in the D60 chart every half a day. Um, but some of those uh, slower moving planets, especially Rahu, Ketu, uh, Saturn, Jupiter, they, they they tend to have a more spiritual significance to them anyways. I would encourage you after you kind of, you know, understand and master the D9 transits to look at the D60 transits for those and kind of learn to um, understand and process that so that, you know, your your wisdom and knowledge and intuition can just keep growing. OK, so thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Until next time, see you guys later. Thank you.